take a moment to thank you all for taking your time to come here. I know we've got immensely busy lives and there's so much to see at the show, so I want to express a huge thank you. I've had a couple of coffees this morning, so I apologise if I'm a little bit... Okay. Today I'm talking about the science of face massage and how we can combine it into our clinics. Come and find a seat. Okay. How many facial expressions do you think you've made today? You might have raised an eyebrow. That obviously now does depend on if you're doing Botox and when you last had a bit of Botox done. You might have frowned, smiled, laughed, cried. These are all facial expressions that we're making without thinking about it. It was, it's what makes us human. We show so much emotion in our faces. I'm telling you all of that because it's going to line up what we're going to be doing about the face massage, okay? For those of you who don't know me, there's a couple of slides here, just so you're kind of thinking, who is this woman, what's she talking about, why is she here? Some of these things are also going to be relevant as we work through the tour. So things like London's High Empress of Facial Massage, the Priestess of Face Massage, these are all things that some press have said about me. They're not saying, oh my goodness, she's got the most amazing bank of equipment in her treatment room. I do as well, but this, this is what they're picking up on. And that's what makes us unique as therapists, okay? This little figure here on my YouTube channel over 14 million views is referring only to the face massage tutorials. It is hot topic, whether that's at home or in our clinics. This is just also a little bit of other things that I've done as well. I've got two books, Loving Skin and this one here. This is still available on Amazon. It is on discount at the moment, okay? Um, I've got a podcast, I work with different brands. So just to give you an idea of, I suppose, the credentials about what might be considered, it's just face massage, okay? Let's have a little bit of a hands up about who we've got in the room. Have we got therapists in the room? Yes, there are, okay, a lot of individual practitioners. Any clinic owners? Yes, uh, okay, uh, any dermatologists or nurse practitioners? Okay, brilliant, that gives me an idea who we're kind of talking to. So I've been doing this for over 20 years. I am a working therapist. I've been the mobile therapist. I've worked in hair salons. I've worked in five-star hotels. I get what it takes to be a therapist running your own business, whether you've got a team of therapists or whether it's you as a standalone therapist. It's tough and it's multifaceted, okay? There are some key points here that I'm pretty sure we will all be able to relate to. You're feeling the market for therapists is increasingly competitive, which is, it's a good thing. There is demand out there, but it's becoming more difficult to get your space and hold your space within the industry. You want more repeat bookings. I mean, I think as therapists, a lot of us chose to be therapists because we've got that passion about what we do. But fundamentally, unless we're earning a living, it's a hobby. Yeah, we need repeat bookings. We need that income. You've got all the tech, but you feel that you're competing with the dermatologists. I mean, I don't know how long you guys have been here this morning, but the beauty shows, professional beauty, we've got lasers and radio frequency and a whole load more tech that we actually might have a machine, and I do have 
some of these amazing machines here in my clinic. But a dermatologist will have that machine as well. And I think the consumer, because they might have the title dermatologist, they think, ah, oh, they're going to be better. We need to hold on to our skills and go, do you know what? I am just as relevant. My treatments are probably adding a different aspect. And as we go through today, I'm hoping you'll glean how your hands can be the most amazing tool, whether you just do the massage side of things or in combination with the investment in tech as well. Maybe tech's not your thing. You know, I know there's many therapists that it's just not their back. You, you might be a massage therapist and you just love the holistic side of things. Maybe you're newly qualified. I don't know about you guys, but I know, hello, come on in, take a seat. I know when I first studied and qualified, I was like, oh my goodness, I feel like Pandora's box has just been opened up. I literally know nothing even though you've just qualified and you, you, you do know a lot, but it's a continual learning journey. So maybe you're thinking of kind of adding to your skill set. Maybe you trained a long time ago. Maybe you've been out of work, as in you've been parenting, having babies. You know, maybe you, you've had a career change. Maybe you were a lawyer, and actually you want to get into our industry. So you might be, sure sounds wrong, doesn't it? Um, a a well-life-experienced person and you want to keep adding to your skill set. Okay, there is a lot of hype around face massage. I'm sure you can all appreciate that. I mean, I think it's a Akua Shah. We all know what Akua Shah is. I never pronounce it. I think one of those has recently appeared on Love Island. Um, as I kind of mentioned, you know, my biggest hitting YouTube videos, they're the face massage ones. It's all over TikTok, whether it's a trained therapist or someone who actually doesn't have any qualifications in it. They've got huge followings now on social media. Um, but I'm sure all of us in the room have been around for a long time. I do absolutely bring your skepticism, okay? I'm all about being honest, you know, in life, but I think from us as practitioners and what we're selling to our customers, if you overpromise, they're going to be disappointed, okay? So I think honesty in everything that we're doing is key. researching because I really wanted to bring some research and science to face massage. I know it's there but I wanted to try and find some research studies so as we go through I've picked out seven core areas that I've, I've got some research on that I really wanted to share. So boosting blood circulation, bringing glow, draining lymph, relieving rejuvenating appearance, lifting face contour, and supporting mental health. This is the little bit of magic, this one in the middle, okay? So we're going to explore all of these as we, we go through the tour. We're going to work on the physical stuff, and then we'll get into the magical stuff. And I'm also, we're going to talk about what it can't do, okay? I think we need to say, it's not going to give the effect of Botox. It's not. It's not going to do what radio frequency can do for lifting. It is not going to smooth the skin and heal scarring like needling can do and some lasers. It is not going to treat pigmentation like IPL. Just a fact. And if there's you know anything that you're reading online going, oh yes, it's going to, it is not. Okay, it is not going to refine your pores. Okay, so you might be thinking, well, this all sounds rubbish, what the hell is it going to do? We're going to have a little bit of a dive into face, face massage 101. It is not new, it has been around as far as I could research for 5,000 years. 
thousand years and it dates back to India. Maybe just have a bit of some water. Traditionally used for treating pain. It was something that, you know, was passed down from family to family. I studied baby massage early on in my career. Uh, and part of that study was, you know, it's mums massaging the babies, and that is just kind of what families did. There are many different methods. I mean, you know, we could probably go around the room, whether it's Thai, Ayurvedic, Balinese, Swedish, Hotstone, there's a gazillion different forms of face, uh, body and face massage. All of those kind of things are things I've invested my time and money throughout my career in learning. I set out early on in my career to keep educating myself. And I put that into a method that I call Rituvology. I know that's possibly a word that none of you have heard before, but I'm taking my 20 years experience and putting it into a concept and a standalone treatment. We are going to kind of talk about that just a little bit later. But it is working on the physical. I think we all appreciate there are high street places where you can go and get, you know, a face massage in self -reduce. The bit they're missing is our magic as therapists. That stuff that can support the mental health that go beyond that. And there's an amazing study that I'm going to share with you about the different types of massage and how being more unique and specific with it can have a dramatic impact on our mental health, okay? Okay, so we're gonna go through each of them, the benefits of each that I've mentioned. Boosting blood flow. I'm sure if you massage your own face, you know you can come up glowing, yeah? There's a, there's a physical response, but scientifically, what's happening? When we press on the skin, we're stimulating the blood vessels underneath where we're pressing. There's a 2018 study that saw two different ways that this could work. 10 minutes of facial massage, participants saw increase in blood flow. So in the short term, the massage is upping the amount of blood pumping through the veins. But something interesting happened in the longer term. When participants used facial rollers, to me it doesn't matter whether it's a roller or your hands, it is still that compression of the blood vessels stimulating the blood flow. For every day for five weeks, the pressure on the walls of the blood vessels caused them to dilate, and that dilation lasted. So we've got more blood flow running through the veins beyond just that time of the face massage. Why, why do we care about that? The skin is an organ, we all know that. It's the largest organ of the body. And like our heart, our lungs, our liver, it needs fresh nutrients, it needs oxygen, it needs the immune cells to grow and produce new cells. Our blood carries this to the skin. So fundamentally, if we've got more blood flow going to the skin, we've got more of all this good stuff feeding our skin cells, making the skin cell healthier. And boosting circulation, this is purely just on the blood side of things, we're going to come on to the muscles and everything else in a bit. That's a little bit where some of this amazing rejuvenation can happen. Okay? Glow. of you, when you get a new client, or even a returning client, they go, oh my goodness, I just don't look so dull, I feel I look washed out. You know, you ask, what do you want to achieve? I just want to look, A, they usually say 10 years younger, it's a joke, obviously, and um, I just want to get a glow, healthy again. Glow, we can prove that massage is doing that scientifically. Um, we've got the inner glow, that massage can do, some of that magic, inner glow. If we're glowing, we feel more confident. If we're radiant, it boosts our mental health, because we're like, yeah, do you know what? I'm kind of on it today, I can do this. We know if we're feeling a bit washed out, time of the month, we 
you know the skin looks a bit rubbish, yet we've got hormones, but our blood flow is impacting differently. So, scientifically, we're glowing because we've boosted the blood flow. If you go for a run, we look glowy, yeah? You know, so the glow can be from our intrinsic factors, what we're genetically born with, but then impacted on what we do in our lives, the extrinsic factors, lifestyle, you know, if we're going to smoke, we're not going to be as glowy because it's restricting our blood vessels, okay? So there's all of those aspects. So the other side of that that is impacting on our glow is the lymphatic system. Let me just catch up. I've gabbled on across my cards. And gone. Okay. Um, have any of you studied specifically lymphatic drainage? Okay, a few of you. I studied the bottom method of lymphatic drainage, uh, I, I don't know, 12, 14 years ago. It really changed how I addressed skin, body, everything. Uh, the, the training that I did, I'd have, if I'd have gone one level on, I'd have been actually able to work in lymphedema units, okay? MLD stands for Manual Lymphatic Drainage. For those of you who, I'm going to presume that you don't know about the lymphatic system, okay? And I'm just going to talk to you about it. The lymphatic system is the part of the body that is getting rid of toxins. Lymph is a fluid that travels through lymphatic vessels to our lymph nodes. So we have accumulations of lymph nodes. You know if you get a cold or you've got a virus and you come up a bit swelly here, you know, we've got connections of them under our armpits, uh, in our groin, behind our knees. So there's areas in the body where we have like collections of lymph nodes. Lymph channels are finer than threads of silk. Whereas a vein is a solid vessel, so, you know, if you squish the vein, the blood stays within the vein, yeah? If you squish a lymph vessel, the fluid can actually travel out of the vessel into the tissue around it. So when our body is overloaded and we've got too many toxins or, you know, we're, we're fighting off viruses, that's where we can get puffiness and swelling. So in its extreme form, Years ago, when uh, they would do um, breast cancer surgery, it wasn't respected that the lymph vessels were so important, which blows, blows my mind. And when they were doing mastectomies, they would damage and cut the lymph vessels. And that would result, for the rest of that lady's life, her arm never being able to drain effectively as well. So manual lymphatic drainage for her never going to fix it but she would then have to have some kind of drainage on a regular basis to help that arm drain the lymphatic system is so essential to our health okay um, what else do i want to tell you about it how does it work so the blood system has the heart that pumps blood around the lymphatic system doesn't have a pump but it naturally has a process called peristalsis. So our guts move food through a rhythmical squishing of the guts. That's what peristalsis is, and the lymphatic system has that. So we can naturally move lymph around the body on its own. However, we smoke, we drink, we party, we get ill, we've got toxins all around us. All of those things, we sit, we're sluggish. All of those things will impact on how effective the lymphatic system is, okay? So if we go back to our glow, if our lymph system isn't kind of on form, we're not going to look as glowy. We might be waking up with puffy eyes, just feeling like puffy in your faces. If you've ever been on a hen weekend or something, your face is just puffy. Yeah, what is this? You know, it obviously goes with the body as well. The fascinating thing about the lymphatic system is we're moving lymph, and lymph massage is very delicate. Go back to those threads of silk, yeah? 
If we're working deeply, we're squishing the lymph vessels, it's not as effective. So lymph me and method, it's very delicate. Um, where was I going with that point? I'll come back to that point in a second. Okay. Medically, it is used in lymphedema units. Okay. It is medically recognized. It can speed up the healing of injuries. Uh, there was a study done, I don't think I've got it written on here, in 2007, where it was proven to bring down the swelling after a patient had had their molars taken out. And I know certain plastic surgeons might actually have, as a referral, an MLD therapist because they know if they can have some MLD before surgery and post-surgery, it speeds the healing process up. That is medically recognized, okay? Rejuvenating your appearance. When I'm saying rejuvenating, I'm, I'm kind of talking about the anti-aging effect. And I know anti-aging, none of us like that word anymore. So I much prefer using the word aging well. And this is something that is core to my concept of rejuvenology. Aging well, yes, it's what we're eating, it's what we're doing with our lives, it's our mental health. Because, hey, I'm, I'm kind of one of those people that suffers with mental health, and I know when I'm not in a good place, the rest of my life falls apart. Mental health so, is so essential. And I think the aging well side of it isn't just the modern day concept of, I've got smooth skin. It goes way beyond that. Yes, it's the technology. Yes, it's the skincare. Yes, it's the hands on. Okay. Face by side, it's not a physical hit. It's an as well as. Um, there are several studies that have shown that facial rejuvenation effects, including a reduction in wrinkles, sagging skin, and improvements in cheek fullness and texture, they have been studied and it has been proven. So you can read it, that's why it's there. 
The smooth layer is the part on the face, it's kind of, you know, here, down. If you've got a high foo machine, I've got one of the Linton's high foo machines, that is targeting the smooth layer. Um, face massage is similar to fascia. I love the phrase that it's like a bigger hugging suit inside. It wraps around our internal organs and everything else. Fascia is quite underestimated in what it can do. We often talk about the connective tissues and the muscles and everything else. Fascia is so essential to so much of what's going on in our bodies. So key point, we know as we age, everything goes south. I mean, literally everything does. You know, our fat pads, uh, the spouse layer drops, and everything, just gravity, it's kind of, it's just kind of what happens. If you were to get a facelift, it's the spouse layer that the surgeon is lifting. So that just kind of highlights the importance of it with what we're physically looking at as our aging faces. Okay. without going under the knife. It is not going to give the result of a facelift. It never will, okay? And it's never gonna give the result of someone having fillers. It's just not. However, if someone is choosing to do those kind of things and Botox, they need face facade even more. Um, okay, so this is a, a fascinating study. In one pilot study last year, the height of the spaz directly after a face massage showed higher up on the face. Plus, mama tops, the bags that can appear under our, at the top of our cheeks, under our eyes, got smaller. Most of these were done by someone looking, you know, a photo of what else I can see. But what's really exciting is that there was also change showed under a CT scan. They found that manual facial massage after just five minutes twice a week. Imagine how long we're massaging the face in a treatment gave a morphological change to the shape of the face. The tops of the cheeks moved upwards and the cheek muscles got thicker. That's a CT scan that has proved that. But again, fact check, this was immediately after the face massage. So this is where the repetition, if we go back to that first study about the blood vessels, repetition, what's supporting our blood vessels longer term. So face massage, amazing if you do it once, but it's the repetition. Benefit six, easing pain. Um, I think this is such a natural thing, you know, you bang your elbow and you're like, oh, you rub it, yeah? You know, if you've got children and your child trips over, you rub you better. We're naturally massaging to ease pain. We know it helps. Massage stimulates the parasympathetic nervous system, which there's a physical response that it helps relax our muscles. We've also got all the nerve endings in the skin as well, which have that effect as well. Um, I want to focus, because we can all talk about that about the body, and I wanted to bring it back about something to do with the, the face and this area that we're really focusing on talking about. Um, in one patient study, it was found the TMJ, so this is your temporomandibular joint, our jaw here, it can cause a lot of pain, headaches, it can go on for a very long time for people. So in one study, they found that combining facial massage with, because they've been having low-level treatment, laser treatment, and dry needling, basically acupuncture needles, and they weren't getting the results that they wanted. So, they added in face massage and it just dramatically increased the results that they could get for that patient. So, this is now stepping into some of the magical stuff. It's as simple as human touch, okay? 
think we can all appreciate if someone gives you a hug. Say a bit emotional, yeah? In fact, to be honest, when we're having one of those emotional times, it's like, I don't know why, I don't know how, I don't know why. And then someone comes up and gives you a hug. They've done nothing other than hug me. So, <laughs> the emotions come out. We know this happens. You know, you might go up to someone and rub them on their arm. Hey, how are you doing? It's human touch that's doing that, bringing about an emotional response. And I mentioned earlier that I studied baby massage really early on in my career, and I never thought the studying of baby massage would have such a profound impact on how I approach treating adults. You talk about positive touch, because we can touch, we can touch, or we can touch, yeah? So positive touch is a really important phrase. The building of the bond, that happens between parent and child through touch is undeniable. And what I loved about treating babies, babies don't lock me. They don't make it up that this has actually soothed me. Oh yeah, that feels better. There's a calmness that comes across them. They're not making that stuff up. I was gonna swear then, I apologize. Um, okay. I think this is such an important thing. Um, and it, it can be in its most profound, as in you can grab someone, you can shake someone, you can cause physical pain, but you can also cause physical pain actually by a gentle touch if that person knows that you're not coming from a good place, yeah? But it can also bring healing. That same hands can have such a profound healing effect on someone. Okay, so this is a, quite a lovely study that they did. Premature babies in intensive care units, they have to deal with a lot of pain, whether it's injections or, or whatever else that little tiny baby might be going through. Scientists puzzled of how to help support that, and they tried sugar water, which obviously giving babies sugar water has other issues. But nurses found something as simple as being held seemed to help the babies deal with that pain. That again is a baby not making that stuff up. This is an, an actual study. Emma Olson, an intensive care nurse and researcher, she did tests on this and found that that skin to skin touch during injections just helped with reducing the distress that those babies were going through. emotional side of things. I am pretty sure everyone in the room can understand where we're saying that pain isn't just physical, it can be emotional, yeah? There is so much we can do with the physical touch to support the emotional pain. And there's a touch research center in America and they do a lot of studies around this. Um, treating mums with postnatal depression, other people, you know, just with uh, depression and everything else. Massage, they've done studies on how beneficial massage can be in easing their emotional concerns. So this is an interesting one. The more physical, physically we tense our faces and worried and frowning we do, there's a scientific cycle called the facial feedback hypothesis. So if you're sat there with your resting bitch face, and that's not just a woman thing, it's scientifically proven that it's men and women, okay? There's actually a, a feedback loop from our expressions to our brains that can actually drag our, our volume down. It can actually make our brain feel unhappy. So there's an argument to say that things like laughing yoga, I don't know if any of you have done that, but fake it till you make it. Yeah, just putting a smile on your face can send a different message to your brain of, okay, I'm not feeling so down here, it's in boosting my mood. Another aspect of this that I find fascinating, and I don't know as therapists whether you've experienced something like this, but I, I've learned through my career that 
certain clients, when I'm working on their faces, I'm no healer by the way, but I would get an emotional feedback from the muscles I'm working on. It was a feeling I just recognized that I was getting. I didn't, I didn't know what it was. And I'm a huge believer, and it's scientifically proven, that face mass, sorry, muscles have memory. We know that scientifically. If you've been to the gym or a sporty kid, and then you haven't been, and then you start going to the gym again, your muscles are gonna snap back quicker. So that's a physical memory. I believe that muscles also have an emotional memory. And that was just something I was kind of getting. You know, the faces hold so much emotion. But like I said, I'm no healer, but I acknowledge it and move on, okay? Now, this is one of those magical studies. 67 women between 30 and 50. They were studying their psycho-emotional states in three different groups. Group one, general coaching and mental health advice. I'm a coach. I think this is really powerful when we're working with our minds. Group two, and that, plus, I'm going to say basic face massage, clinical massage, the stuff that might be on the high street. But then group three, had the coaching and the mental health advice with my own fascia facial massage and working on trigger points. These are methods that I use amongst with other things as well in rejuvenology. And they had these things for once a week for 10 weeks. The level of depression dropped immensely more in group three. So that is not just basic face massage. That is a different method of treating the skin, the muscles, the tissue, beyond I'm just doing a routine here. And then in this group, group three, those positive effects continued longer term. So this is, maybe this is some of this that magic woo-woo that we've got our fascia holding emotions in. That can't be explained. But if we're going to look at some of the scientific studies and put the whole thing together, you have to start going, okay, there's a bit of magic and woo-woo going on here with the physical and the scientific. So if face massage can do all of this, what the hell can it do with all of your other stuff? Say you've got a focus jewel or an Indiva radio frequency machine or a laser or whatever it is. If you combine face massage with some of the tech you've got, A, is it going to increase your results? B, is it going to make your clients feel better working on the emotions? There's so many nuances I've definitely found from my clientele after a treatment. It's what I ended up calling my signature facial the wow factor facial. Because before they've sat up and looked at what their face looks like, they go, wow, that felt amazing. They don't even look like they you know, wouldn't do anything to them. But it was the touch, the art and skills of positive touch can be your superpower as therapists. And when we come back to the business side of things, have clients coming back time after time. We can't with the dermatologists. We are a room of therapists and clinic owners. We've got an amazing industry. Clinics are popping up on every street corner. They are, it's just what's happening. But there's a demand for it. But if you're on your high street or working out of your home or going to people's houses, your touch is what's gonna make you different to someone else who might have the same technology as you. And that's where you have a client come to you and you might be their therapist and they are so loyal to you. They're not loyal to the machine you've invested in. They're loyal to you as a practitioner and how you care about them, how you nurture them, how you touch them. So I feel like I've blabbed on quite a bit. I think one of the key things I'm really aware of being a facialist or a skilled practitioner, I can well go back to the quotes that some of the press have said about me. It used to be about the skills of a therapist, yeah? 
not about has she got the money to buy all the technology. And I think this is now the missing magic that we need to bring back. I love the tech. I really love the tech. But it's that bit of magic that as therapists, it would be amazing to get back to and embrace because that is your superpower. Okay? I don't want to suddenly do a sales pitch for rejuvenology, okay? You have on your seat, you've got a little red card. If you want to know more about the training, there is a QR code. If you can't get the QR code to work, scribble your name down on it, and I've got a couple of my team sat down at the front um, who can answer any questions. How are we doing for time? We've got time for some questions, if you guys have got any. Um, so I hope you found that interesting. Do you have any questions? I will come to you in a second. Hello. Yeah, um, so what is that you spoke about the lymphatic massage and how it has to be gentle? And yeah. Actually, I've read quite a lot and I've read it up. Like you said, people do it quite like a person, right? But then also, obviously, when I was trained, I was taught to do vacuum suction. Yeah. So would you say that it's fine? Because what is that, like, aggressive? Yeah, yeah. It's a great, great point, actually. So vacuum suction or facial cupping because you can do it manually with facial cups as well that's what's called a negative pressure okay a pressure is pushing in which physical massage does whether that's delicate or firm a negative pressure is when you're sucking the tissue out yeah so with that negative pressure it's almost a lifting of the tissue to then shift the fluid yeah yeah, yeah. So, gua sha and facial rollers, I know you'll see videos out there that say, hey, you can use this to drain lymph. And it's, I'm, it's kind of sceptical, to be honest, because you're pressing in, whereas the facial cupping will drain lymph. Okay? Fillers in for eight months, 
Yeah, I actually would. Um, what fillers and Botox are doing or aren't doing, massage can do. They're not stimulating blood flow. They're not uh, doing all of those other amazing things like the lymph stuff and everything else. So just because someone has chosen to do Botox and fillers, I know it gives a quick fix in the appearance, but it's not doing the skin health and aging well point of view. It's not stimulating collagen production. It's not doing any of that stuff. And if we want to age well, we need to get stuck in with our hands, yeah? If someone's recently had fillers and they're feeling a bit more, I don't want pressure, the lymphatic and the lighter stuff is great, yeah? 